Hi everybody, uh, I'm Jim Shore. And today we're in my kitchen here in South Carolina in my house. You know, one of these days I'm gonna do a tour of the house. I bet you y'all would like to see a little bit of the rest of the place where I live. Uh, and the, you know, where the family is, our Christmas tree, you know, decorations, everything that we see during the season. Maybe we'll do that later on. But today, uh, in light of the fact that we're all home because of the virus situation and we're looking for something to do, uh, I like to cook. And uh, as you know, every once in a while I'll do one of these cooking segments where I'll be making chili or jambalaya or one, one or another of the things that I like to do. One of my favorite things to make, and it's the simplest thing there is, is meatloaf. I mean, it's, a, it's an American staple, you know? And what it is, if you do it right, it's like it represents every food group there is. So it's like a meal in itself. And you start out with ground beef. Now that's kind of hard to come by these days, but if you've got, if you can find uh, chuck roast or something like that, and you have access to a grinder like, like this grinder here, which I just happen to have one, uh, or it can be one of those small, you know, hand grinders or whatever. You can make your own. Uh, I actually prefer making my own, but uh, this is this is store bought. But uh, if you make your own, just make sure it's got a sufficient amount of fat in it. But this is good. 80-20 uh, is a good ratio. This is good fresh uh, fresh hamburger. And uh, <clears throat> start out with that. Okay, that's the base of it. That's the meat part of it. Uh, before I've gotten started, I've preset my or preheated my oven to uh, 350. I think any range between 350 and 400 works because you're going to be cooking this stuff for roughly an hour, giving or give and, uh, give and take. Uh, I check it after about 35 minutes and then 45 minutes, and then but it usually takes about about an hour for it completely to get done. However, sometimes you brown the top prematurely. So I've got a couple of pieces of aluminum foil, which when I start off, I'll lay that, I just simply lay it over the loaf, and that'll keep it from browning too early. Then uh, towards the end of the cooking, uh, roughly oh, 10 minutes or 15 minutes or so before I feel like it's gonna be done, I'll remove that, let it start browning, and I will coat it generally with a little bit of a glaze, which I've made here already. And this is just simply ketchup and uh, brown sugar. Uh, Squirt to ketchup, handful of brown sugar, mix it up. And then you just uh, paint that on the top of it. And it gives a little bit of a sweet, crusty, uh, you know, top, which is, is kind of nice. That's really optional. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. Now, the <clears throat> thing about meatloaf is there's a hundred different ways of doing it. And nothing's really wrong. I mean, you can do, you know, Jan, my wife, she's uh, kind of a picky eater and she doesn't like a lot of stuff in her. So when I make a meatloaf for her, it might be just simply uh, the, the meat, the binder, the filler, and maybe onions. That's it. And, uh, and, and of course, the ketchup and, and that sort of thing. But, and she's perfectly happy with that. I, on the other hand, like a lot of different stuff. And I like to experiment too. You can put anything you want to in this, from soup to nuts, literally. <laughs> uh, so what I've got here is just a variety of stuff that I've, I've already chopped up and fixed up, ready to go. Uh, an important aspect of it is the egg. That serves as a binder and holds everything together. This is two eggs uh, that I've beaten up a little bit. Um, and then the filler, which in this case is, uh, saltine uh, crackers crumbled up, and I use about two and a half to a couple of loaves that I'm gonna be making. I use about two and a half inches worth of, of uh, saltines, but you can, use, um, you can use croutons, and the nice thing about using croutons, they'll be already flavored. If you have uh, some stovetop stuffing that you're not using, excellent. Uh, you can use uh, uh, stale bread. You know, the bread gets a little bit uh, past uh, its prime. Cut it up into cubes and use it. So it's a lot of different. You can use oatmeal or you can use oatmeal or any of those things along with the, uh, the cracker. So that's 
But what you want is something that will be like this, that will suck up those juices and hold those juices in there and hold that flavor in there. And that's the, that's the reason for the filler. Uh, I also like to occasionally put, this is brown rice. I put that in there uncooked. You don't cook, use very much. This is probably less than a fourth of a cup. It'll, you know, of course, swell up like rice does. But that's uh, brown rice. I've got a combination here of a little bit of brown sugar, a couple of, uh, couple of teaspoons. And uh, then I've, I've also added some cracked peppercorn and a little bit of, uh, just a little bit of salt. Mixed it all up and I'll add that all together. I've got uh, chopped onions and garlic. That's a small onion or half of a large onion and about uh, four cloves of garlic chopped up. This is uh, ketchup and mustard. As you can see, I've, I don't measure anything really. I've sort of done it for a long time, but that's probably a half to three quarters of a cup of ketchup and uh, then a couple of squirts of, uh, of uh, mustard. This is mushrooms and raisins. You might think that's an unusual combination, but it really, it really adds to the flavor and the texture and adds a little bit of additional sweetness. Occasionally for texture and sweetness, I will chop up a carrot. Uh, I use that periodically in soups and stews and, and, uh, and meatloaf. I'm not doing it on this, this time, but uh, that's something to think about. But you can put walnuts in it. You can, put, you can do anything you want to, and it'll change the flavor and change the texture. The technique or the texture and so forth, and it'll make it uh, custom. So, and <clears throat> what you do, you just dump all this stuff together. Now, what I have done beforehand, meticulously washed my hands. I make sure that my surfaces are nice and clean. That's very important these days, what with uh, with the virus and so forth. And I have removed all of my jewelry and my watch, and because I'm going to get be getting my hands in here. And I want everything to be absolutely clean for the safety of uh, me and my family. And you'll want to do the same. So you can start working this stuff in as you, as you add it. And it uh, makes it a little, bit, uh, a little bit easier. Just dump it in there. Boy, the smell of that garlic is just wonderful. I love that. Now this, oh, well, that, that, was, that was peppers. And one stock of... Uh, of uh, celery. So I like to I like to use the stoplight peppers they call it which are red, yellow and green. It gives it a little bit of color, but just regular bell peppers will work. That's my brown sugar. This is the the unusual combination of mushrooms and raisins. There's my uh, brown rice or wild rice, either way. I think it works a little better than, <clears throat> than white rice. Okay, now you add the eggs. That's actually a binder. It'll help everything stay together in a firm and a, a firm a loaf. And you just work that out all together. This is actually something you can have a good time doing it with kids. Kids love to do this kind of thing. And this is an easy thing to do. And it's one of those things that, you know, on a weekend or, or, or something, you think, what can I do, you know, for, for supper tonight? Well, meatloaf is the perfect thing. And if you make two loaves of it, you can have one for supper and, and one tomorrow. You can cut it up, make sandwiches out of it. It's just the... It's, it's just a great food. Okay, I'm going to spread that back out because I am going to add the ketchup. And, and a lot of people do this differently, too. Some people don't add it to the mix. They'll rely on the glaze at the top for, the, for that. But I like, to, I like to add it into it because it gives it kind of a, a good flavoring. Okay, make sure that it's 
all mixed up. That looks pretty good. You can sort of tell when everything is sort of evenly, evenly dispersed. And then as you make these things, of course I know most of you probably already made a meatloaf at one time or another, but I just I just urge you to experiment and don't just make it like your mama made it, you know, make it like you like it. Put fruit in it if you want to, apples, whatever you want to put in it. There's no wrong way. Okay, now I've got my pans here and I have uh, pre-greased my pans. I use a little bit of spray stuff, it's convenient, but you can use, uh, you know, you can use Crisco or lard or baking grease if you have it. Uh, anything to... Now without packing this too tight, I'm just going to put that in there. And that's what it looks like. As far as volume is concerned, I, I like to do it like this where it's not real thick. Seems to seems to cook a little better. So even if I have enough for just one big loaf, I like to sometimes break it up so I got two smaller loaves that are thinner, and it seems to seems to bake a little better. Okay, now as I said, I've got this. This is a topping, but I won't put that on immediately. I'll wait until I start the browning process. That way, it won't get overcooked. Or get or get rubbery like uh, like that kind of stuff sometimes sometimes does. Okay, now get this out of the way. And now, as far as the aluminum foil is concerned, I'm just going to simply lay it in here like this, and it uh, doesn't have to be sealed or anything. That way, that'll keep it uh, that'll start it out cooking evenly without uh, overdoing the top. And I'll check it in about a half an hour. Then I'll check it again in about 45 minutes. And in about 45 minutes is when I will, I'll take this off, start the browning process, 40, 45 minutes. And at the same time, I will put, I'll just brush this on top of it, ketchup and uh, brown sugar. And, and within an hour, we'll have meatloaf ready to bring out, take out of the pan, let it rest a little bit. And then you can keep it in the refrigerator. You can serve it right up. You can do it however you want to. And in an hour, I'll come back and I'll show you what we got. So until then, in the oven. Okay, I'm back. Um, just took them out of the oven, let them rest for just a little bit, and that's what they look like. Has a nice glaze on top of it. I've cut myself a piece off here so that I can, uh, you know, give it a try and see see if it's worth the effort. And I'll do that right now. Look at that. Mm. That is so good. Mama would be proud. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, how long did they cook for them? Oh, they cooked for, let's see, I, I put the glaze on after 50 minutes. I let the glaze stay on there for about 20 minutes. So all told, it was about a hundred, I mean, uh, an hour and uh, 10 minutes, hour and 15 minutes. Then you let them, go, then you take it out, you let them rest for just a little bit and uh, have firm them up, you know, let them uh, get to where you can actually cut them without them falling apart. And uh, and that does it. And uh, But it, it is really good. It's a meal all by itself. But you couple that with some I don't know, macaroni and cheese or mashed potatoes or something like that. And it's quick and easy and uh, and uh, the whole crowd will just absolutely love it. And, and like I said, experiment, you know, put some cheese in it or put, you know, whatever you uh, whatever you have in the refrigerator that you like and that you know you're not going to serve otherwise, put it in a meatloaf. It's a lot of fun experiment and include the kids. The kids get accustomed to doing this kind of stuff with you, and they'll they'll take this these uh, 
cooking skills with them the rest of their life. So anyway, that uh, that does it for me today. And uh, we'll be back again pretty soon. In the meantime, as I said before, stay safe and stay healthy. I love you all. God bless you. Talk, talk again soon.